What is going on YouTube? This is Platinum Point, and I'm here to bring you guys another White Shorts deck profile. This is going to be on my English Fujimi Fantasia Bunko deck. Um, this deck, this set, I've been testing for about a month already, and honestly, I like the set. If you don't know um, what Fujimi Fantasia Bunko is, uh, my buddy Jack from Three Six Cancel, shout out to him. Um, did a video on it. I'll put it hit in the link in the description below. Also, if you guys haven't checked out um, my Fate Stay Night um, Yellow Red Green build, the I'll put the link on the I right around here on this side of the screen. Um, please check that out or, or check the link in the description below the other two um, deck profiles that I've done. I've done Fate Stay Night and I've done my um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think it's um, one second. Just checking my YouTube right now. Yes, it was the Psychono build. So check out those two decks. They'll be on the description below. But without without further ado, let's get on to the deck profile. Starting with the zero step. So we're playing four copies of the Kudami Free Runner. Not Kudami. Or Origami Free Runner. Out of all the zeros that you could possibly run, there's the the oversize, the clean cut for utility. I prefer the Free Runner. As it has a higher chance of staying alive unless your opponent tri fields, which in this current state of the meta, it's actually not that great because you're leaving resources out for your opponent to take apart. So, most of the time, people are just going to either field one or two characters, and you're able to either f go into the weaker lane to, den to deny him material for the next turn, or you're going to run away and then play characters that can beat over the other two. Um, and the, and the great the better part about the free runner is that you don't have to worry about the mill condition, so it's actually great to have the free the free running origami in this set. Um, hopefully, when the data live set comes out in English, I'm able to tech her into the deck. So then we play three copies of the inherited magic talent Sistine. I managed to get one SP Sistine, which is really nice. So um, she's basically an on reverse Rize. So when she when she gets reverse, you top three check and then add a Magic or Fantasia Bunko character and discard discard it. So this allows you to mill through your deck and get the necessary pieces in order to facilitate either your one step or even maintain um, hand fixing, so you have a stable hand for um the next turn and also maintain compression next i play three copies of the absolute god kurimu so she's basically mordred from the fate apocrypha um set she's basically the mordred ricky so when she comes into play you get to scry the top card of your deck and decide to either keep it or mill it so usually I use this to help me fix my clock whenever I need to because the top com confirmation allows me to determine what color it is. If it's a color I don't want, I mill it and then I pay one to clock, to blind clock to see see if it can fix my color. And it's a salvage rookie. So it salvages any, um, any student council or Fantasia Bunko character regardless of the level. So this is actually really good. It allows you to fetch whatever piece that you need at the time. And since the Minami combo is a is considered, in my opinion, a searching combo, I needed a Salvage Brainstorm, so I'm playing three copies of the Kurimu um, Salvage Brainstormer. Even though we have access to the Suzuka one, which would be on paper better, because if you trigger Climax, you give a plus 1k to um, your characters. But the problem is it's a searching brainstorm, and I wanted something that can manipulate the wait waiting room other than just constantly relying on the Ricky. So I needed some kind of form of um, salvaging, and the salvage brainstorm actually fits my needs, and it's also a good source of red fixing in the deck. And then for the zero, 
finish wrapping up the zero steps, I play two copies of the trial deck Euclid Wood and the two trial decks drop searches. So the U is basically an on play top check. Add any weapon or Fantasia Bunko from it and discard and discard a card from your hand. And it, but it also has the ability on attack give plus one thousand to any character. Plus 1,000 equal to the number of soul they have. So when you slam a climax, you can give a character plus 2k. So it's so like if you give it to the Minami combo, she's going to reach about 9k. Which will reverse almost anything that it comes into contact. So this allows you to basically accrue um, really good resources and really good pluses. And as for the drop search, we're just playing it for the hand fixing and also... Being able to just um, dig for any selective pieces that we need. So it's a selective and precise search. And then wrapping up the level zeros, we play one copy of the Oda Nobuna stock um, swap. It's a pay three. Your opponent sends all the cards in their stock to waiting room and replaces it immediately. So this is our main form of stock troll. And then now for the one step, we play four copies of the Mafuyu... Um, he Heki Hekio Academy Treasure Mafuyu. Sorry, I don't know this series that well that she's in, but I but this card is actually really good. She's basically um Saber Minami, except she has an a better um plusing effect on the first in terms of plusing her power. So when a climax is in play, she gets plus fifteen. So she becomes six K. And 7k with the climax. Ideally, you want to play the door, her, her door climax. And when she reverses an opponent's character, you, you mill up to the top four, select a student council or Fantasia Bunko character, and give another character plus 2k. So this allows you to really um, just thin out your deck, get close to first refresh. By the end of ter by the by before level two as possible, and it just really good overall since the the door trigger allows you to salvage on trigger, so that's why I like the her, playing her. Next, we play four copies of the Koneko Suicider. So what she does is when she comes into play, you get to scry the top card of your deck, and you can either keep it at the top or mill it. So this is basically essentially helps you get that five card brainstorm, or even six card if there are multiples of her in your hand. And she pairs really well with the Minami combo, because if she reverses something, or if multiple of her reverse something, you can actually give the plus 2k to the Koneko, which she'll usually survive that that, that that attack. And you basically have a Suicider on defense, which is really nice. And then lastly, for the one step, we play two copies of the Shido from the Bunko set. So this is probably the only Data Life card that doesn't have any other trait except Fantasia Bunko. So you're most like 100% not going to be playing him. Unless there's a way to like just draw him, hard draw him. But his effect is on play against 500 equal to the total number of Fantasia Bunko characters on board. And it also has the other on play ability. You get to shuffle back two characters from your waiting room into your deck. And it, you get um, to side with no penalty. So this allows you to do very cheeky plays where you get to just side if you can't beat the lane for two. So you can guarantee like just more damage output. And this is really good, especially at the three step if you want to side for precision damage. Since you don't have to worry about siding for Nag Soul. And I, and interesting enough, he actually still can get damage out of Medusa. So if you're playing against Fate Stay Night and it's the 8 gold bar build, you could actually feel this and not be worried about it. Next, I play the Anti-Change Backup. It's basically a pay one, discard two, Anti-Change. I'm also playing the 2-1 Mafuyu, which is a 2k level assist to level threes. And a pay two, tap self-heal. Basically uses to manipulate your clock. And then lastly, 
two copies of the Slayer Toka 2-1. So it, when she's on the field, she gains plus 15 for every card in your back row. And when you put Act Ability, whether it be Backup, Brainstorming, or even the Mafuyu, she gets plus 500, equal to the total number of Fantasia Bunko characters or Spirits on board. So she basically... Allows you to guarantee reverses against level 3s. And since she's not a bottom deck reverser, it's fine. But she is a slayer. And then now for the 3-step, we play one copy of the white dress, um, Sistine. This is basically your answer to walls. When she comes into play, select a character on your opponent's field and bounce it. So this allows you to answer the Futaba wall. Um, the It helps you weaken the presence of the Medusa wall. Even the Priestess Wall a tad bit. So this allows you to do some interesting plays. And she gains 2k when she bounces. And then I also play one copy of the Ries 3-2. Um, this card is actually pretty much, in my opinion, slept on. Because she has two effects. One is when she comes into play, you get to free play any level 3. And it gains plus 1 soul. And the demon trait. So this is really good for helping you set up some cheeky finish plays. Like you could play her free play the Kermi from hand. And essentially just pay three to p play three characters on board. And the best part about it is <laughs> the Kermi that you play off the free play. You can side for one on climax combo. So you can hit for precision damage if you if your opponent is at 3-6 or even 3-5. And then you just hope to get the proc burn one so this allows you to basically do some precision sides with no problem and not having the fear of being punished by it so this card is actually pretty good it also has the on attack um this card gains plus 1000 equal to the total number of fantasia bunkos on the board so it allows you to help you break the wall if you need to and it's just an overall good um red utility card at the three step. Next, I play two copies of the early play Rumia. I know I could play more, but right now I'm really tight on space since I'm also playing another card, which is also a healer. Um, this is a actually memory healer, which is a little bit better than the other one, but this other card is also my secondary finisher, so I do kind of had to cut down the Rumias to two. And she also has the um, other on playability, pay one, discard two, double the attack of any character on board. So this allows you to wall break if you need to, and overall it's just one of the best he healers in the game. Next, I play two copies of the Origami and Kurumi promo from box topper promo. So when it comes to play heal and after your first attack, you may pay 5 and restand. So this is your secondary finisher. If you're unable to get the Kurumi finisher off successfully, you're able to at least you um, do um, a finishing um, combo with her and with this and Ries. I've actually closed games where I would free play this off of Ries, front the lane for 3 and then side since it gains the plus 1 soul. For, for precision damage and it just decimates a lot of players sometimes because you're just swinging big first time restanding and siding for really small and the best part is even if you lose the battle it restands so you're guaranteed the the second swing provided you have five stock that is um lastly we play four copies of the Kurumi finisher. So when it comes into play from either hand or deck, you may pay one and basically superior call the other ones from the deck. So basically for a pay for you get to full board a a a army of Kurumis, just like in the anime. And she combos with the pants trigger and she gains effects based on to the, the number of cards in your clock. If you have two or less cards in clock, you get to shuffle back a card from your waiting room into your deck. So this allows you to recompress your climaxes and basically survive the next turn. And if you have another um, door in hand, you basically get to rebut their play again. 
when you clock in clock to um cl three clock, and if you do have three or more cards in clock, she gets the ability on attack if your opponent mills the bottom four cards of their deck, and you burn equal to the number of cl climaxes revealed. So this is for the first time in English a a Michiru effect. If you remember Michiru from Psychono 1, she basically is on attack, mill the bottom four, and burn equal to the total number of climaxes. So this card is actually really good against compressed decks. So th that's why what I mean, like, this is basically your main finisher against compressed decks, against um, non-compressed decks or un decompressed decks. You're going to be playing the Origami one more likely because you're going to just get more um, value out of this card. But if you're going up against compressed decks, you get more value off of the Kurumi finisher since you're more likely to hit climaxes. Overall, I like this deck. It's probably one of the more interesting versions of Fujimi Fantasia. I find standby to be very um, boring and very easy to answer. So I hope you guys um, like this deck profile. And don't forget to rate comment subscribe false crack that like button and stay on point guys